It's rare that we have the opportunity to check out really cool classic trucks, and that's because, frankly, there aren't a lot of them up here. Why? Because they rust to pieces more often than not, or they fall apart, or they've been butchered. So when we have the opportunity at TFL Studios to look at a very cool classic truck, we jump on it. And we have the opportunity here with the 1978 Datsun 620 King Cab. This is this re I mean, just an amazing truck. And I want to bring out the new owner of this truck because it's for sale. And more importantly, it's really cool. So come on out here. All right. Uh, introduce yourself to the crowd. My name is Joey, and uh, I'm the new owner of this Datsun 620. You can tell he's a Datsun fan. You couldn't see the hat. Let's talk about it. So first of all, why did you want to buy this vehicle? Why do you own this vehicle? Uh, to find one, like you said, in, in good condition, that's not rusted out. Those trucks are always worked to death yeah. or beat, um, rotted out. To find one this clean, I just I can't say no. Um, probably if there was a 12-step program for vehicles, <laughs> I'd, I'd probably be in that one. Um, and it's just super clean and super fun. And everywhere you go, people give you the thumbs up and they want to stop and talk about it. I bet they do. So. Um we're gonna go over the mechanicals in just a second, but let's take a walk around the outside of it and just have a look-see here. Now, uh, you went and bought the vehicle and it needed a few things. One of the things you did is you put the tires on here. Did you specifically want white walls on here? Absolutely. Yeah, hell yeah. Yes, uh, <laughs> getting the blue off, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, th that's gonna take some time and some scrubbing. Um, when these vehicles came out, almost all of them had white wall tires. And a lot of people don't realize that that was just a like common thing back in the 70s. and this one, the cool thing is, is that you actually have modern tread on it as opposed to, you know, like a bias ply setup where you have, um, you know, really goofy tires, uh, especially up here in this climate. Uh, one thing I noticed right off the bat is that the body is really straight. Um, and it doesn't look like there's any major rust that I can see at least. Um, did just, you... just a little surface rust from what I can tell. Uh -huh. um, and it might, it might have been repainted once in its life, maybe. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I know it sat in a guy's garage for about 15 years. Ah. Um, so the, whoever owned it in the past definitely had a, had a passion and a love for these vehicles because they definitely took care of it. Now, as we're looking at the side, I wanted to point out something. We talked about this off camera, but this is something that you don't see on modern trucks very often. And this is something I dearly miss. It's the ability to tie down things using the outside of the truck and not encumbering anything on the inside of the bed space. And the cool part is if you come to the back, it's even on the tailgate. These tie downs are so freaking cool. Now I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that the uh, payload on these trucks was just under 1500 pounds, between like 13 and 1500, depending on how you had them equipped. And by the way, he wanted to keep all of these um, bumper stickers. The one that I really like, Amco Motor Club. The one on the side says that there's a $2,000 reward for reporting any uh, stolen uh, club car. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's on the driver's side. See, we don't have stuff like that today. <laughs> um, well, another thing we don't have, by the way, are toppers like this. And the reason why this is really cool is because this is something that would come directly from your dealership. Back in the day, you could see this was specifically made for this vehicle as it has that grommet that goes all the way around. And that particular component, usually up here in Colorado, would fall apart. <laughs> so the fact that it's in decent shape is awesome. But this basically came as part of a package with this vehicle from the dealership, which is really cool. And I kind of miss it. And the reason I miss it is because I was originally from California and you could talk about the history of this vehicle, right? Because that's where it's from, right? Finding the, finding the king cabs with a sliding rear window is almost impossible. Um, they all have the fixed windows. Um, and to have this one to be, have the reach through to be able to put something in the bed while you're driving is kind of a cool feature. The interior is in super clean condition, by the way. Did you replace anything on the interior? I did not. This is how I got it. It has the rip in the driver's seat, and I actually have, um, this is the third 620 that I've owned. I have a 77, um, and I have two seats out of that that are fully reupholstered with a, just a silver insert. Um, so I, I hate to touch it because this is all original, Right. but I, I have an extra set of seats if somebody wanted it. Um, I, I would let those go with, with the truck. If you guys are wondering, for those of you who don't know the history of Datsun and Nissan and everything else, these are still called Datsun trucks up until the next generation before they started putting a little Nissan badge on them. But the company was always Nitsa, Nissan. Datsun was sort of the vehicle name as opposed to the company name. And that powertrain you're looking at right there, well, it's got quite a history. Now, what are we looking at? Uh, this is the L20B four-cylinder. 
uh, paired up to a four-speed transmission. Um, this one is, uh, again, a little rare because it still has the AC unit uh, attached. Um, everybody, er, almost every LB20 that I've seen, it's very rare that you have the air conditioning. I currently do not have the belt on it. Um, I need to recharge the AC system and, and get a belt on there. Um, but that's super rare for this motor. Um, if you look at any other engine bay, it's like a hole right here. You can see right down to the ground, and that's right. because none of them had factory AC. I think they were super rare, but this is a California car, and that might be one of the reasons why it's on there. Um, up here in Colorado, at least right now, unnecessary. No. Um, very clean engine bay, and uh, in just a minute we're going to start it up so you can hear it run. But uh, a couple things I wanted to point out. Now, first of all, um, around 97 horsepower, at least when new, and also at sea level, <laughs> probably not putting out that much horsepower up here in Colorado. Um, four speed manual transmission but there was a rare five speed that on you could find but it was really hard to find and then there was also a three speed auto which i think was on a few of these as well yes um so there were those but one thing you guys might be wondering is four wheel drive not available on these although there was a company that i believe did set these up for four wheel drive but it wasn't until the next generation that they started building four by fours that they would sell here in the united states at least so that, that, now, I, if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments below. <laughs> All right, um, so why don't we fire it up and just uh, sure. hear the little puppy run? Absolutely. I love that all the old stickers are still on here. Yeah, the we're paint check code. Those out. Oh, look, you even the have the stamps, one. the yeah. hood stickers. Everything's almost legible. By the way, there's no catalytic converter on this, even though at the time a lot of vehicles, especially in California, had them. And that was because the way this thing was set up, it actually didn't require it. That's very. That is smooth, my friend. You feel that power. <laughs> so, um, what did you have done to it? You, you know, you bought it off of somebody who had it sitting around. Uh, did you have the uh, engine overhauled or anything like that? Uh, the valve cover was uh, just replaced, uh, just did a tune-up, uh, did the timing and adjusted the valves, uh, new spark plugs, uh, plug wires, all that's been redone, fresh oil change. Um, I'm going to work on the AC, recharging the AC and getting a belt on there, see if I can get that to work. Um, the headlights work, the high beams work, the horn works, the dome light works. Oh, wow. The wipers work. Uh, I do not have the sprayers working yet, so just a little little fine tuning uh, left to do. But um, you know, time and work schedule is always. <laughs> That's, I totally get that. Well, why don't we shut it down and then we'll have a look see um, in the back because you guys are going to totally dig. For those of you who are into retro vehicles, you're going to love what's in the back of this thing. Yeah, the carpeting is very 1970s. Uh, I, I can say that with some authority. A uh, little shag thing going on over there. And this is, uh, yeah, pretty cool. A lot of people did this with these trucks. Uh, they'd set them up to make them into sleepers or partial campers and whatnot. And um, fortunately, it doesn't look like you screwed into the bed or anything else. It looks like everything's just been laid on top of it, which is a good thing. Yeah, the, the little things that he did, like the, the mylar here, he put to protect the paint on the bed so the wood would rest on the mylar and not rub on the paint yeah. when it vibrates. Um, and both sides open up. You can see how clean the bed is on the inside. That's another thing is that you rarely find beds on these trucks. Normally they're used as work trucks. Um, lots of small companies, gardeners, plumbers, whoever, they're going to use these things and just absolutely beat the crap out of the bed. And so usually the bed will be all rusted or scratched, you know, and this one is in really clean shape. Once again, living in Colorado, it's really brutal on a lot of components. Anything rubber, anything that's a silicate, anything like that tends to dissolve over time. And this one is in really good shape. All right, so do you want to give everybody information on this? I know it's for sale, so you might as well just, you got a captive <laughs> audience, you might as well tell them about it. How about email? It's uh, joeyparent72 at gmail.com. You can send me an email. I'd love to talk to you. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Uh, you might be wondering why we're not going to take it for a cruise. If you look around you, uh, there's an awful lot of snow. We want to take it really easy on this thing, especially because it is a precious commodity and he's going to try to sell it. And I don't want to ram it into a pole plus Roman told me not to so anyway um, thank you so much really appreciate your time and uh, this is such a cool truck um, <laughs> I, I wish I could buy one but my wife would kill me we'll see you guys next time thank you